Firefighter Albine. You're watching On the Job with EFD. Hi, my name is Kevin St. James. I'm a firefighter at EMTI with the Exeter Fire Department. Hi, my name is Christy Kerrigan. I'm a firefighter paramedic with the Exeter Fire Department. We're here to show you the updated changes to cardiopulmonary resuscitation, known as CPR, as taught by the American Heart Association. If a late rescuer comes across a victim that is down and unconscious, they should immediately check for responsiveness. Hello, sir. Are you okay? No response. What they would like you to do is call 911 and get an AED right away or get someone to call 911. Paul, can you call 911 and grab an AED, please? Or she would call 911 herself. If there is no one available, the rescue themselves should call 911 and get the emergency services started. She's immediately going into chest compressions. And what they're looking for at the new standards is high quality chest compressions. High quality means two inch depth at least two inches of depth, full chest recoil. After she compresses, the chest fully recoils back up, and she's doing it at a rate of 100 per minute. As you can see, it's pretty rapid. The idea is fast and hard, but at least two, and a, two inches and full chest recoil, two breaths after 30 chest compressions. This is different from the old standards that were taught ABCs, it's now CAB. Compressions, airway, breathing. The reason why we do CPR is when somebody's in cardiac arrest, their heart is no longer functioning. So it's our goal in initiating CPR as soon as possible to artificially pump that heart manually um, from an external source to maintain brain and heart function. When someone does come with an AED, an AED stands for Automatic External Defibrillator. You find these in schools, airports, police stations, cruises, fire trucks have them. These are available and becoming more and more readily available. And what it is is it's a monitor that you would hook the pads up to the patient while someone is doing CPR. And if you look at the pads, they explain where they're supposed to go. There's usually a picture right on the pads and you place them while the person is doing CPR. After the person has done CPR for two minutes and the AED is in place, you would turn the AED on and check see if they're in a shockable rhythm. So now that Christy has done CPR for two minutes, she's going to take her hands off the person. The AED is turned on and it's going to analyze. The AED will explain everything it's doing to you. and It'll say analyzing now. It'll take about 15 to 20 seconds. It'll check the rhythm. And if it's a shockable rhythm, meaning ventricular B-fib or VTAC, it will advise you to shock. And you're going to deliver one shock by pressing the, the button if it tells you to shock. If it says no shock advised, you're immediately going to get back into chest compressions. Again, 30 to 2. And you're going to do that for two more minutes and then check the AED another time. And you keep doing that until rescuers arrive. For the untrained rescuer, when you call 911, emergency medical dispatch is going to explain to you to do hands-only CPR. By hands-only, because you're untrained, you don't know how to open the airway or anything else, you're just going to be putting your hands, they're going to explain where to put it on the nipple line, right on the sternum, and pressing two inches down at a rate of 100 per minute, and you're doing that continuously until a trained rescuer arrives or emergency medical services arrive. But this is called hands-only CPR. You don't interrupt for anything. You're just doing the chest compressions. The Exeter Fire Department would recommend anyone over the age of 14 to take an American Heart Association CPR class and learn how to do it properly. We thank you for your time.
Hi, my name is Lieutenant Paul Moore with the Exeter Fire Department, and today we're going to be um, going over reviewing smoke detectors and carbon monoxide detectors. RJ Hardware on Lincoln Street in Exeter was nice enough to uh, donate some of these items uh, so we can re review them. There are two types of smoke detectors on the market today. One is a photoelectric smoke detector, and the other one is an ionization smoke detector. Both both uh, photoelectric and ionization smoke detectors can be uh, hardwired or battery operated. And the, we'll talk first about the, the photoelectric smoke detector. This should be installed at, at every level of your home, and including the basement. And the, um, the way these operate is that the photoelectric smoke detector uh, responds to smoldering fires. So a fire that um, is small in the early stages, such as um, a wastebasket fire, produces smoke and it gives the occupant early notification to evacuate the building. The second type of smoke detector is an ionization smoke detector. And this too comes in a battery operated or hardwired device and should be installed the same locations at every level of the home, including the basement. This ionization uh, smoke detector responds to flaming fires. So a fire has to be pretty well underway before this thing will alarm. So there's a, you have a better chance, the better choice of smoke detectors for a home would be a photoelectric smoke detector because you want to have the fire discovered in its early stages um, when, there's, when there's smoke and smoke development to evacuate the building, to alert the occupants and evacuate the building. The, um, some tips on the smoke detectors. On the back of the smoke detectors is a guide. Make sure they're UL approved when you purchase them. And they're also, they're good for 10 years. The life expectancy is 10 years. So the best thing to do if a smoke detector is going off is to evacuate your, your family. You and your family evacuate the building and call 911. Both smoke detectors and carbon monoxide detectors um, you should have you should be changing the battery in them twice a year preferably when you change your clocks back and change them ahead next what we're going to talk about is carbon monoxide detectors carbon monoxide detectors should be installed in all households on every level of a household for maximum protection and for the minimum protection they should be installed between the furnace and the sleeping area carbon monoxide is produced by the incomplete combustion of uh, fuel-fired appliances. Some of, the, uh, some of the signs and symptoms of carbon monoxide poisoning include headache, dizziness, and nausea. The way to um, detect carbon monoxide poisoning is to install carbon monoxide detectors. The uh, detector is battery-operated battery or it can be plugged in to the wall outlet or hardwired. And these also have battery backups for the, the plug-in uh, detectors. Again, on the back of these, you have all the manufacturer's recommendations for installation. Um, UL approved, make sure that UL approved. And it just says right here, these are good for five years. If a carbon monoxide is installed and it goes off, carbon monoxide detector goes off, excuse me, and it's a, the best thing to do is to evacuate your building and call 911 and get the fire department to respond. Um, and inside these carbon monoxide de detector uh, packages comes with a complete listing of all, all user information you need to know about installation, um, life expectancy of them, and uh, troubleshooting problems. If you have any questions regarding smoke detectors or carbon monoxide detectors, please don't hesitate to call the Exit of Fire Department Fire Prevention Office at 773-6133 and we'd be happy to answer your questions. Thank you.